We're going to be talking about teaching the discipleship lesson, part one, and we're going to use salvation by grace as an example. And it starts out with Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. So what you want to do is get Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 and put it in the person's lap so that they can read that out loud. Or if you're in a group, you can read it out loud or you can have the people in the audience read it out loud. Like I say, use different translations. That would be helpful too. So I'm going to read Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, For by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they that receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And then you ask the question, after they read it out loud, what kind of righteousness is God offering according to this verse? What kind of righteousness is God offering here according to this verse? Now somebody might look at that verse because it's kind of a complicated verse and they might say, well, you know, I really don't know. And so I might say something like this. Okay, let's read the verse ag again. And when it comes to the part of the verse I want to emphasize, I will stop and help you see what I'm trying to emphasize. Okay, so then I have the person read. For if one man's offense... For if by one man's offense death reigned, that's by Adam, death reigned and came upon all the world, much more they that receive abundance of grace. So there's going to be people that receive not only God's grace, but His abundant kindness and undeserved favor. Abundance of grace and of the stop. And I just tell them, stop. What's that next word? Gift. The gift of what, Sally? The gift of what, Johnny? The gift of righteousness. Did you realize that God is offering you righteousness, Sally, by, as a gift? And even though people think they know what the word gift means, always try to illustrate with some, by some way, by saying something like this. Well, what do you think the word gift implies? And just let them answer in any way they want to answer and then try to illustrate the point. You know, if I bought bicycles for my children on Christmas and I gave them the bicycles on Christmas and then I said, and by the way, in, Jan in January, you're going to start making payments, would that be a gift? No, that wouldn't be a gift. You're making them pay for that. If I bought some groceries and said, I'm going to bring groceries over here and give it to you as a gift, and then after the Bible study, I said, by the way, you owe me $53.20. They'd say, what? I thought this was a gift. A gift is free and you're going to make me pay for this. See, that's exactly the point I want to get across. So when you're teaching, when, you, when they're discovering things, even if it's as simple as the gift of righteousness and they think they know what a gift is, illustrate it. Illustrate it through an illustration, the bicycles. Illustrate it through an illustration, the groceries. You see, a gift also costs something to the person that purchased the gift, but to you it's being given freely. You know what? It costs God the death of His very own Son, but it's offered freely to you. So I hope some of these points... In teaching the lesson part one, you'll see how to get them to read the scripture out loud, how to ask a question, and even, even if they get the question, the question wrong, that you can stop them at a particular point in the verse to emphasize a point. Then illustrate with illustrations the things that you're trying to say, and it'll be much more helpful in your teaching. God bless you.